Welcome to Adventures in Reach, where the next adventure in your reach might be repelling. And when you get to the base and you unclip your ATC, your Grigri, undo your Munter hitch, or whatever you're using, you might be thinking, how do I get this thing down? So I'm going to go over the three different situations where you might need this and several methods as to how to retrieve it. This is by request. Let me know how I did. Let me know what you think in the comments and let's get going. So the first reason that you might be repelling is to return to the ground after a climb. So if you're doing a lead climb where you're, you're doing a bolted route or you're placing protection as you go, then what you're going to find on a lot of these routes is an, a bolted anchor at the top. And generally there's going to be two of these and often they'll have some chain or often a quick link on them. You're just going to put your rope through these carabiners or these chains. And again, remember there's going to be two of them and you're going to lower this down, tie a knot at the bottom of your ropes, even if they touch the ground, and then you're going to repel down both ropes. Now after you've unclipped, you are going to just untie the knot at the bottom and pull this thing back through, and it should go through nice and smoothly, and the end will fall back to the ground where you are. All right, so now let's say that you are repelling just for fun. You didn't go climbing, you actually went rappelling. You came out, you set up a nice anchor, you padded the top, unlike this demo, and you have this anchor system set up. You rappel down with one strand or two, either way, but you have your anchor supplies, your gear up at top, and you want that stuff back. So what are you going to do? Well, quite simply, a lot of the times, you can just walk around. <laughs> So neither of these first two options are as fun as what I'm going to show you next. They're pretty obvious and they're not all that creative. So let's get into the more interesting stuff. And before we get there, if you're interested in any of the equipment, the gear that I'm showing you today, then check the links in the description where you can get directed to what I would recommend. And when you're down there, if you could just hit that like button, it helps a ton. So continuing in the fun category, instead of just walking around because that's kind of boring, instead we're going to practice some skills to ascend the rope and get back to our anchor system and take it all down and then we can walk around. So, a couple ways to do that. The first is we can use some prussics. Now prussics are just these tied loops of rope and you're going to tie these with double fishermen's. Make sure that you tighten them so they're nice and hard because you don't want any chance of these things coming undone. You're just going to tie this on here. So one, two, and three. Tighten it up. The ropes that are pulling are on the inside. And then you want to really roll it to the center, get it nice and tight. Okay, this is going to be the loop that is on your waist. The second, longer loop here is going to be to put your foot through. So how do we ascend, you ask? Well, it's pretty simple. First, we're just going to pull the, the loop on our waist up as high as we can, pull our leg loop up pretty high, and you stand up. Now, when you stand, you're going to push this knot with you. <laughs> the rope's tightening up there. Okay, and now you can sit on that, and then you just kind of lean back, Get your foot one up again, stand up, move this up, and just, you know, rinse and repeat. Here we go. Now, as you notice, although it's not the norm, you can certainly go back down the rope using this method as well. So this is a great one in case you're in a pinch sometimes. It's a great skill to practice, so I certainly recommend it after your rappel. If you enjoy prussics, you might enjoy Purcells even more. These are made to fit your body size, so your arm and leg length. Now, the cool thing about Purcells is that unlike prussics, if you fall, then what happens is that when you put enough tension on this, the, the knot right here will pull 
and release and take on some of that pressure. So that this is like a shock absorber so that you don't get that shock in your body. Other than that, it's the same deal. We're gonna tie it on the same way. Then I have another one, again, the longer one, which is gonna go on the bottom here. If you're having a little difficulty moving these, then just make sure you are popping this outer strand here. It really loosens up your knot and makes it much easier to move. See you later. All right, so as long as we're on the lines of ascending your rope afterwards, because you're trying to practice these skills, we can use some other things as well. This is a mini sender by Petzl. Uh, this is uh, just a camming device. Same principle as before, so waist and feet, waist and feet. So here we go, waist. Just using the same Purcell, feet, waist. Now, one way that you can improve this system is by actually having a shoulder harness, and then you attach your belay loop to that shoulder harness, and when you stand, this just automatically pulls the ascender right up with you. So it's another really nice option. It does make us a little quicker and smoother. Now, one of my most popular videos shows practicing these things in a stairwell, off a porch, uh, just on a steeper hill, something like that, before you go to the cliffs. So just be careful out there, ask some questions before you go, make sure you practice it. So if you like the idea of practicing some skills after you rappel by ascending the rope, then you're going to love this one. Now, this technique is the RADS system, the Rapid Ascent and Descent system. And so what this consists of is an ascender with a pulley and a loop for your foot. So this gets clipped on your rope on top. Now underneath, you're going to put a gree gree. And so you're gonna orient it so the little climber guy is up top, close this up, and this is going to get clipped to your waist. You're going to take this rope that comes out of the gree gree, and you're gonna come up and you're gonna to try to avoid any twists. You're going to put it through that pulley and then clip that in, lock that. Lock, make sure your bottom one's locked. Mine's a auto locker. And then you're going to get in your leg loop, your foot loop. When I stand on this leg loop, I'm going to pull down right here with this loop that goes through the grigri and then through this pulley. So here we go. I'm going to stand. And when I stand, I'm pulling, right? Okay. And now I sit down into my harness. So my grigri has me. I'm going to push this leg loop up as high as I can, and then I'm going to stand again. And I'm just going to keep doing that over and over. All right, now, I just went about 10 feet up, switched over, came back down, didn't take very long. So when I get to the top, all right, I get up there. Now I wanna switch over, kick my leg loop out. I pop this ascender off. And this whole assembly can just go down onto my belt. Now you notice I have the pulley hooked on still. If you're going to go down a few feet and then go back up, you know, I, I just leave the pulley on there. If you're gonna go down a ways, I just get rid of that and uh, decomplicate the system, right? So then you're just back to a, a regular rappel with a grigri. So you get your backup hand where your rope is wrapped over the a rounded edge here, and then you're just using the handle to go down. You want to switch back and go back up. Very simple, just take the whole system, make sure it's not twisted. Clip on, foot in, and you are ready to go again. So, super fast. You might even say rapid. This is an amazing system, and it's awesome to practice after repelling to get back up to your anchor. So we've covered doing this for climbing and for fun, and now we're going to cover trying to get somewhere. Now obviously a lot of these can go in those different groups, be used for all sorts of different reasons, but I'm trying to lump them together to give you a better idea. So anyway, if you're trying to get somewhere, one option is to leave gear. So basically you rappel down your double line, and then you're just going to pull this and leave your system up there. Now, not ideal. I personally like my gear and want to keep it, so I avoid this if I can. However, this may be the safest option in some situations. Now, if you're going to leave gear uh, and you plan on doing that, 
generally what people will do is use rappel rings. So you tie in a ring instead of leaving a carabiner because a rappel ring is much cheaper than a carabiner. I'm not a huge fan of that. And so there are some other options. I'm not going to explain it here because I think they're a little dangerous, but there is a ghost knot and a retrievable bowline. Now, both of those are knots that you can tie up here at an anchor point and then untie them from the ground without being able to touch those knots. Hopefully, as I'm describing it, you're kind of cringing going, but what if? If you can untie it from the base, then can it untie itself? And yes, it, they could. Um, it's not super likely, but again, I don't really recommend either because there's other safer, useful, functional options. So I would stick with those uh, unless you're really in a pinch or you just want to play with something. Now, my last option is my favorite. Now, if you're going to use this system where this is a tagline system, you're going to want to use a BFT, right? A big effing tree. So uh, think about something that's super uh, stable, like uh, something that has a nice taproot, has been there for years. I'm talking like a nice cedar or maple, an oak maybe. Something that's big, that's reliable, that uh, it's not on a bunch of, you know, exposed rock where, you know, the roots don't go very deep. And if you can put them around a clump of trees, then that's even better. You've got some redundancy. Uh, but you also want to think about being able to pull the rope around that thing. So I say a tree versus a rock because rocks are really difficult. When you go to pull on a rock now, you are abrading your rope. You're also really kind of having a lot of resistance and it may be hard or difficult or impossible to pull because what happens is there's cracks in rocks and you wedge your rope in there and now you just have a wedged rope. What do you do? You can't trust it to go up. You can't pull it down. You just have a rope stuck there. Uh, so you would have to walk around or leave it. And so we really want to do nice big trees um, or we could use this on a bolted system or an anchor system and then just have the single line and be able to repel twice as far with this system. So first thing you're going to want to do is tie a carabiner onto the end of your rope. Now I recommend doing a triple overhand noose knot like so and this it uh, cinches up onto this carabiner and this really prevents you know like a figure eight or something from cross loading and ending up like this and then pulling like that and you can't see it so if we do this triple overhand noose knot it stays there as much as it jiggles around it's not going anywhere and then we're going to go around our object and we're going to clip the carabiner to the rope that we are rappelling down on we want to kind of have this in line going around the tree as opposed to over here. So we're not generating extra forces. Okay. So straight in line around that tree. That looks really nice. Now we're going to take a second line, this little tag line. And as you can see, this can be very small. So this is a demo, but your tag line could actually be this small. Now you could throw it down. You could have it in a little bag on your waist where it just pays out like a throw rope. <laughs> um, and so you're going to have that where that's going to go all the way down to the bottom of your rappel. So you want it to be as long as your main rappel rope. Now what you're going to do with that is you're going to tie this onto this carabiner as well. And you can use the same knot here. So we've got the two lines on here. So we rappel down on this red rope all our tension there. And then we get to the base and we pull this blue rope and see what happens here. It just pulls right along. And it just pulls the, the rope right through this carabiner all the way down until it's within our reach. Untie everything. Make sure there is no knot at the end of your rappel rope. And then you're just going to stand at the bottom and pull this thing around your anchor until the end is back at the base. This is an awesome way. Like I said, it doubles the length you can repel. It's pretty simple to set up and understand. Let me know if that was helpful or what else you would like to see. And again, please hit that like button. It's free and super helpful. And I hope that you consider subscribing. We'll see you next time. There's always an adventure in your reach. All you have to do is find it.